Hey guys, today I'm going to answer the question of why MTG Finance is so jealous of Rudy. I will go ahead and say this, Rudy has made me quite a bit of quote money. Now it's not really money until you sell it, but I'm going to hold it on reserve list cards that I own. And I owned them before Rudy became popular, so I just could never get rid of them. Like, no one would ever want... Why would anyone ever want, a, what is it, a Vidiric artifact from Miraz? Now it's like 8 bucks supposedly. That's absolute bulk to me. It, I still treat it as bulk, but now I put it in my binders. The reason that people don't like Rudy is the same reason people don't like others to be successful. Um, this is something I have seen uh, personally. Um, a lot of times there is jealousy. And the jealousy is based on the fact that somebody is doing this on a larger scale and making him very successful. We can say that Rudy is successful because we look at his collection and we look at all his reserve list cards, which have just increased in price. We look at his Patreon, we look at everything he does, and it is a very simple and basic model, and it works. Um, and there's no reason not to continue that model for him. People don't like uh, to see other people succeed. And this is something that I learned in startup and in technology. So I worked at a startup in San Francisco. We did sell the company successfully. And people out of the woodworks just came out of nowhere and it's like who are these people and it's like oh i used to work at this company way before you know you started or i came up with this concept and it was my idea you know an idea is just that it's totally useless unless you implement it and execute it but all these people came out of the woodworks claiming that the thing that we sold was partially their idea and then we it's just insane right so I've always wondered, why doesn't someone with a lot of money come in and just just absolutely dominate this secondary market, which is ripe for abuse? It's ripe for abuse because it's an easy to manipulate market due to the fact that the reserve list is unlike Pokemon does not have a reserve list, right? The base two is base one. So if you imagine Pokemon base set with the Charizard. Well, they printed it base two, and now they printed Legendary Collection. So those cards are being, not only are they being reprinted, they're being reprinted stronger. So the new Charizard is stronger than the old Charizard. Same, same artwork, just better. Uh, same with Yu-Gi-Oh! I remember Tour Guide of the Underworld. Uh, that card was printed as a common, I think. So some of these most valuable cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! are now just commons, or promos of some type. But Magic, the most valuable cards in Magic can never be reprinted again because of, I imagine, a very foolish policy. But uh, this foolish policy was implemented again because, you know, you, you look at some other memory jar, I think one of the Mox Diamond, what, what was it, Mox Opal, Mox Diamond? I'm trying to remember which of the Moxes. But they did print Khan, actually Khan, the original Khan is actually on the reserve list and he's in from Relics. So it used to be from the vault would have reserve list cards. It did. It just did. But then, because it was considered a specialty card, but they closed that loophole. Why they closed it, I will argue, is because they're idiots. But anyway, back to um, the reserve list. This is known. It is absolutely known that the reserve list will, cards will go up in price. I have no doubts about that. If I had $100,000 and somebody offered, you know, X amount of reserve list cards, and particularly bulk, I would put it, I would buy it. There'd be no question. But it's hard to get them now because people are holding on to them for their life, which is what I told you previously in the video. I don't know what's going to spike next, but I know one of my reserve list cards spikes a day. Each and every day, something I own and multiple copies of that I couldn't sell. I couldn't sell as bulk. I was try I remember trying to sell these cards as bulk rares in Star City Games. What was it? Star City, what was it? GP Houston in 2013 or something like that? 2000 It was a while ago. It wasn't their most recent GP Houston. I know I remember it was on Valentine's Day. Was that Star City Games? But anyway, I remember trying to go sell it as bulk and they wouldn't take it because it doesn't have the color bulk. 
they would only take it at the bulk bulk rate for commons and uncommons. So, so much has changed because since that time. I'm sure they would gladly take the Mirage rares now, but now I'm not going to sell it to them. So, I have benefited greatly from this. Um, now, do I wish that I had not sold my collection two times previously to it when I had more beta cards? Yeah, absolutely. But what can you do, right? What can you do? It is what it is. But I am looking at the margins. I'm looking at these cards that are utter crap. And every day they keep going up in price. They're not going to go down in price. And I know this because of the reserve list. There's never going to be more of these cards. It will only be less. Like Seed of Innocence. Talk about like a card that no one ever would want. It's $8 now. What is it? Six, eight dollars What's a Grim Feast? It's like $4 now. These cards, even they were never good. Even when they came out, they were never played in standard. They were never good. They were never in extended, which was like our version of modern a while ago. They just never got it. So people are jelly. They are jelly that someone's doing it way better than they can do it. So instead of being, you know, being pr proud and, you know, benefiting from it and be like, oh, cool, I bought reserve list cards too back in the day because that was smart to do, uh, people are getting jealous. Um, now, there's two type of people I think are who are very jealous about this. A, the type that hide behind paywalls and discords and stuff. Like, Rudy's advice is free. And it's real because he's showing you the cards he bought. Biggest criticism I have on MTG Finance is I don't think half the people own, I don't think 99% of the people saying that they made this speculation own a single copy of that card. Otherwise, they would have take a picture already and post it. Because some occasionally on Reddit, you'll see someone post a picture of a spec, right? It takes them as long as it takes them to write a 800 word article. No, maybe last time. And that's all you need to say. Cool. Cool, show me the binder. Show me the co collection. They won't do it because I don't think they own it. Um, and that's from, you know, that's the concept of people who I think want to be Rudy. They don't have the assets or the capital to be Rudy, but they pretend to be Rudy. And then Rudy shatters their, you know, fake image of themselves, which is very, very, you know, brutal for some people because that's all they have. You guys know who I'm talking about. You know the guy at the card store whose entire um, point of going to card store, he may not even play Magic, is to show off his collection because he thinks that makes him cool. I know you guys know who that is. When I go to card store, I bring, I don't even bring a trade binder. I, I, my trade binder is a bare bones, right? Because why would I risk, you know, if I'm not making a trade, if it's standard and I have F and M, why am I bringing my dual lands to standard? Like, who am I going to trade with? Like, what, like somebody in standards going to trade me standard stuff for my dual lands like it doesn't make any sense but you know who i'm talking about the guy who's so um pride to quote a very famous youtuber many people don't have pride it's not worth anything uh is his collection and then every time he'll bring his collection in he'll show it off he'll pretend to do a trade or maybe do a very small trade and then he'll bring his collection in next week it's like, why are you bringing this $10,000 collection or $10,000 ED8 stack like, to play our like, janky ED8 stacks? That doesn't make any sense. Like, does it make you feel better about yourself? Like that you have put most of your income in magic cards? Like, I don't know. So he ruins uh, what um, a lot of MTG finance people think about themselves. And secondly... And more, most importantly, I think people without reserve list cards are getting angry because they missed the boat. If you don't have reserve list cards now, you missed the boat. The boat has already left. It is on its way sailing. And here's what I'm going to tell you. There's no store who does not understand what's happening right now on TCG Player. They've seen their reserve list cards get bought out time and time again. They're not idiots, right? I went on Strike Zone online to try to buy out their alpha beta. I can't find a single copy of it. They took it out. 
and that's not just them. Every store in Houston that's smart no longer is putting it online because they know that the next spike, this $100 card, is now going to be 200 And they posted for 100 so they look like idiots. Anyway, I hope you have your reserve list cards. It's not too late to buy into it a little bit. But my gosh, these prices have really taken off. I would never buy Seed of Innocent for $8. I wouldn't buy for $0.08. Cents. But is it nice, my my bulk card, my card that a, somebody, a, a TCG player or someone wouldn't even buy for like one-tenth of a cent is now $8? So, quote, taste and marks. It's really nice. Um, and that's why MTG Finance hates them. I think it's great. And I think I'm going to ride out this wave. Um, it's the rising tide that raises all boats. You don't need to be the biggest boat, but you are going to benefit. Anyway, bye guys.